Previously, I made a video to show you guys how you can correct your elongated stars in your images, whether they were from guiding issues or anything like that. They're egg-shaped or stretched. Cyril has given us new tools to be able to correct those when we don't have the opportunity to actually reshoot that data. So I have taken all those steps in that previous video that I demonstrated and automated them by putting everything into a script. So with this script, all you would need to do is load your image with the bad star data in it and run the script. It'll do everything for you automatically. Everything, every step that we went through in that last video, this script will handle for you. And after I posted that video, I heard from a few of you saying that you really didn't like what the full resynthesis was doing to the stars, that it, they looked fake. And I, to be honest, I can't disagree with you. They were really sharp. So in this script, I also apply a Gaussian blur to kind of soften those up in an attempt to try to make them look more realistic. If you're not familiar with the video on fixing the stars, or you're not familiar with using the new StarNet feature with and Cyril. I have videos for both of those on my channel. It's best that you watch those two first so you know how to set up StarNet and you understand the process that the script is doing before you come and download my script and run through it and use it that way. I'm not going to go into details on how to configure StarNet and get it running on your system. There's a bug on the Windows version of it, so it's real important if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about to watch those other videos and then come back here and you can move forward with this one. Let's get to it. I'll show you the script and what it can do for you. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, we'll start with where you can get the script from. I'll leave a link down in the description. This is my OneDrive account where the fixed misshapen stars exists. So just click on that link when you're brought to this page, hit download, save it to your director of your choice. I'm just leaving it in the downloads. Once it's done, I'm gonna go into the downloads folder and right click and say cut. And then we're gonna browse over to the scripts directory for serial. So the C drive, program files, Cyril scripts and then we're going to paste it so now the fixed misshapen star script is in the serial script directory we can close these two windows i already have serial open and as you can see because it's already open it doesn't know about the script yet you can do one of two things you can simply close serial and reopen it and it'll appear or if you don't want to do that you can come down to your command line and type reload scripts and hit enter and you can see it reloaded all the scripts, including our new one. And we can verify that by coming up to the scripts menu and see it there right at the top. So I've already pre-processed and stacked this data using the OSC pre-processing script. So we're just gonna make sure that my working directory is set correctly. Try for the Lagoon, open, verify it up top here that that is in fact our current working directory and just click open and the result file that that pre-processing script created for us. It'll open it up in the linear view. So I'm going to come down here and change it from linear to auto stretch. And if we zoom in, you can see the stars are stretched. I had guiding issues that night and didn't realize it until the next morning when I started processing. So we'll go back into a fit view with the button down here on the right. And all we need to do at this point is go into our scripts menu and run the DSA fixed misshapen stars. Now, over here under the console, there is no progress bar for the entire process. You'll see one like you do right now, but this is just for the StarNet process. And then once it's finished, the progress bar appears to be complete, but it's not. So just, just keep an eye on the console screen up here. You'll see everything that's going on. I'll show you what to look for when the script actually finishes. And the obvious is, is when it's finished, it'll load the image with the corrected stars in it for you. So we'll let this run and then we'll go through exactly what the script is doing and what your options are for post-processing afterwards. Okay, it's finished. So again, over in the console, you'll see where it says, thanks for using as well as the last couple lines script execution finished successfully total execution time one minute 30 seconds obviously execution time will vary depending on your machine your data all those variables maybe quicker maybe maybe slower but when it's done like i said it loads the corrected image which is named fixed stars that fit and if we zoom in all the stars are nice and round. All the trailing has been removed from it. I'll open up the script here in a minute and show you guys how you can change the settings 
for the Gaussian blur. If you wanted to add more blur or less blur, or maybe you don't want to add any blur at all, we'll just go through a couple of the settings that you can play with in the script to tailor it to your needs. But for now, like I said, here's our final image, fixstars.fit. You have three options at this point. You can run with this image here and finish your post-processing workflow, meaning you can stretch it with the stars and any other part of your workflow that you usually go through. But right now we're viewing this in an auto stretch mode. It is still linear. So this is where you would stretch it from. Your second option, and it's what I usually do. If we jump over into File Explorer and we take a look at what the script created for us, right? So this is our original file with the messed up stars in it. That's the one we opened up before we ran the script. Fixed stars is the one that's open up currently right now with the corrected stars. But because we were using StarNet, it also created a Starless and a StarMass version. So these two files are still here for you. You don't need to run through the StarNet process again, if that's what you want to do. So my process usually is I run StarNet, so I have these two files here. And then in Cyril, I would open up my Starless and do my processing here, save it, and then sometimes even come over and open up the Star Mask and do some stretching and some processing here, save it. And then once I'm done with those two files, I'll come up to image processing, star processing, and star recomposition, and load those two files up that I just processed myself, and use this to recombine the stars into the starless image. The third option, and it's the one that I even mentioned in the last video that I don't really recommend doing it. I, I really recommend that you stretch your image first before you try to recombine it. Because if you do it in this tool, you kind of, not kind of, you have to do all your stretching in one step. Because as soon as you press apply, it not only applies that stretch, but it combines those two images for you. And you're kind of done at that point. Any more stretching you want to do is going to be with the stars. So this is your third option. If you want to do it that way, that's fine. We'll just open up our star list on the left hand side. And we open up our star mask on the right hand side. And take our view back into linear so we can see what we're doing. And we'll just stretch this over a little bit. Again, this isn't really the best way to do this. You should stretch it individually and then recombine it. But just to show you our final result with the recombined stars. So there's our background stretched. Then we can come over and we can bring our stars in however much that we want. A little bit more, get some of those faint ones to start popping back in for us. And then hit apply. So now I have my combined image. Zoom in, take a look at them. You can see they're a little bit blurred from the Gaussian blur. So that's everything the script does for us. Um, before we look at the script, though, I want to jump over into Photoshop and show you guys what I did here. So this image, I have two layers. The bottom layer, which is what we're viewing right now, is without the Gaussian blur applied. So if we zoom up a little bit on some of these stars, and then we go to our top layer and turn on visibility, this is with the Gaussian blur. So... That's with, that's without, that's with, that's without. It does, you know, it makes the smaller stars, I think, look a little bit less sharp. It does blur the larger stars a little bit, but, you know, it's, they kind of still do look a little fake. Um, so let's jump into the script and I'll show you what it's doing and what changes you can make to it, if any at all. So you can open this up in just Windows Notepad if you want. I am using Notepad++, which just gives a better view for me, numbered lines and such. Starting from the top, anytime you see a hashtag, that's a comment. It'll be ignored when the script is ran. The first one is just verifying, again, that you're using the correct version of Cyril, which in this case is 1.2.0. These two lines, save fixed stars and load fixed stars, just like I have in the comment here. It is taking that result file that you had opened up, and it's saving a copy of it and then opening it. There's our star net command doing the, the prelinear stretch. Once it's done, it opens up the star mask that star net created. Then it configures the find star settings and detects all the stars. And this is the first one that you can play with. This is the, the roundness parameter I have set to 0 0.1 which is the same value that i set it to in my last video and you know you can go I th you can go down to zero i believe and you can go up higher too it just if you you know you look at your stars when the script is done just like you would look at your stars when you did it manually 
And if it's not grabbing everything, then uh, you may want to play with this number a little bit. But 0.10, I think, should catch just about everything in, in, in any image that we run this against. Once that's done, it detects all your stars, then it does the full resynthesis. When that's finished, this is the Gaussian blur. So I currently have a set at 1.2, depending on the time of day. Sometimes I think 1.2 was good. Other times I think it may have been too much. Play with it, right? The higher the number, the more the blur. The less the number, the less the blur. If you don't want the blur to be applied at all, just come to the very beginning of the line and put a little hashtag symbol in it and it'll ignore that line and skip over. The next step is it just saves the star mask that it had open. And then the next command is uh, it's pixel math. So it's taking our star mask and our starless images and adding them back together. The 0 0.02 multiplied by the starless image I put in there because of the pre-stretch that Starnet does. If I was simply just to add these two together without having this 0 0.02 time times function in here, a lot of the stars just simply disappeared. So 0 0.02 for my set of data worked. Again, you can play with this. It's like a, it's a percentage of, so you can uh, go lower. If, if you weren't seeing like all your stars, you can go higher if you think it's too much. So that's another value that you can play with. Or again, you can throw a hashtag in front of it and completely have it ignored. You just won't have the, the final image loaded for you, but your starless and your star mask files will still exist and you can move forward from there. So once it recombines them, it saves it and it loads it. And that's what we were seeing as soon as the script finished was the, the final product. So that's it guys. That entire video I put out a few days ago, completely automated with one click, load the image, click the script and you're done. Let me know what you think in the comments, any suggestions, ideas, I'd love to hear from you. As always, thanks for your time. Give the video a like if you found it useful. Share it with your friends. I'll see you next time in clear skies.